Being Mathieu van der Poel or Wout van Aert, has your cyclocross season failed if you don't win the Worlds? Yes. Should Shirin van Aanrooy regret her choice to race in the under-23 category? Yes. Will we witness a royal sprint between Mathieu and Wout on Sunday? No. I've got the sparse, the sickness, there's the twins in my brain. Welcome back to Domestic Cycling Podcast. We're a few days away from one of the most unpredictable cyclocross world championships in history. Wout van Aert against Matje van der Poel and Puck Pietersen against Fem van Empel. It's time for a preview on those races with my two usual suspects, Yves and Bram. Hi guys. Hey. Hi. Excited for the Worlds to begin? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like uh, the the two big guys from this uh, CX season, cyclocross season, all set is their main goal to be ready for the World Championships. And now we're a couple of days uh, away from it and I can't wait. Same here. Are you, are you yeah. guys always excited for the start of a cyclocross season and, and during the season or... Are you more excited in 2023? I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, at the start of a cyclocross season, I'm not really interested. Um, I know it's maybe not so popular to say, but the usual cyclocross riders who ride the whole season aren't very interesting for me. They are very good riders. They are... Uh, They are extremely strong, but I think uh, for me, the cyclocross season starts when uh, Pitcock, Van Der Poel and Van Aert get in the in the fields. So you're not staying at home for a battle of uh, Ili Izerbit against Lorenz Wick? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, what about you, Bram? Um, the Belgian National Championships, they were uh, held in Lokeren, your uh, hometown. Yeah, uh, and I kind of got to admit that I didn't go see it because it wasn't going to be a very exciting... Well, with, without what Van Aert, it would be uh, sort of the, the, the remaining field. And yeah, I couldn't get motivated to go watch it, and I'm sorry. Um, but <laughs> I, like, if... And I don't want to like take a... Like, put offense on any of the other riders but I think what for not deserves to be Belgian champion regardless whether or not he rides because uh, well he is the best Belgian rider that there is right now all right before we start the big uh, Mathieu against Wout van Aert uh, battle between us um, let's talk about facts there's the course in uh, Hoogrede um, what do you guys uh, think of the course There were some minor changes, like, uh, for instance, the the barriers are a little bit closer to the finish line um, than it used to be. Um, do you think it's it's a world championship worth worthy course? I think the course is is pretty nice again. Like uh, Howard Hede is a race that takes place every year, and every rider likes to go there. I have the feeling. Um, there are some slight changes in the course, yes, and a lot of I heard some comments saying uh, Adrie van der Poel made those changes in benefit of Mathieu van der Poel. Oh damn and here we are, it started um, The reasoning behind it is because the planks where they need to hop um, is on a slight uphill section so everybody who can hop over them quite fluently has an advantage uh, on the guys who can't hop over it or are a bit less fluent. So, yeah, that's the reasoning behind, behind the uh, Adrie van der Poel does it for Mathieu believers. Um, do I agree with it? I don't know. I don't think so. It's Adrie van der Poel is one of the race organizers, but he's not the only one. Well, uh, I, I pretty much agree um, with Niels Albert, who said that it's incredibly hard to build a course in favor of Mathieu van der Poel, um, which isn't at the same time in favor of Wout van Aert and vice versa. Yeah. So, 
Um, I agree. The the two barriers being yeah a little closer to the finish line may be a minor advantage for uh, Van der Poel though I think because he's always more fluent um, hopping over them than, than Wout van Aert who had some uh, issues on them in the past um, but yeah I, I don't agree with um, the saying that Adri van der Poel um, makes it in favor of his own son no I don't think so either uh, it's, a, it's a logical change to be doing it gets a little bit more explosive this way uh, because right after his barriers you're going to have to really put the power down uh, and to get back up to speed um, but no I don't think that uh, Adri is uh, putting his son at an advantage by making this change or not like at least not knowingly uh, it's just a, a good change to the parkour like we saw it in, in the World Cup in Benidorm as well Um the barriers were there too and yeah they they weren't uh, decisive uh, let's say it like that um besides the barriers we also have um some corners to talk about um there are a lot of 180 degrees uh, turns on the course um Adri van der Poel describes the bends as yeah you can keep on pedaling uh, in there so you don't have to stop and yeah, when saying that, I think that might be slightly in favor of Wout van Aert, who has the bigger engine of the two. Um, do you guys agree with that? I definitely yeah, do. I, yeah, same. But I think it's more interesting. We know the course right now, but what's the weather going to be like? If it's going to be really muddy, it's going to be more Van Aert-ish parkour because there are a lot. There need to be a lot of horsepower. Um, but if it's a little bit more uh, slippery, then I think Van der Poel uh, is a bit in favor. Now, I don't know how the weather looks like uh, for Sunday. Um, they don't predict a lot of rain. Um, it will rain uh, at some point, but not that big amount. Um, talking about that, um, Van der Poel, Adri also said that yeah, he didn't want to have too big of a running sections um, on the course so that has something to do with, with the rain and the weather as well um, he said when there will be a lot of rain that yeah, the running sections will be like 50 to 100 meters so it won't be that big I think that's a good thing that it's still bike racing and I know it's part of the cyclocross to run with a bike but if you have like a, a parkour where you need to run 50% of the of the time it's too much and I think uh, the Dutch nationals uh, had a lot of running um, <laughs> so I don't think that's beneficial for a for a nice race that was actually a pretty close race uh, so and as well as the Belgian championship is also a really close race and they were both quite uh, running heavy races so I don't think that necessarily needs to be the case maybe we should talk about the two scenarios next um, scenario one um, this week it will rain a huge amount um, what do you think will happen then Van Aert gets away halfway and becomes world champion I kind of have to agree with that. Like, in, if it's a really muddy course that has a lot of running sections in it, Van Aert has shown that he has an advantage. Um, so yeah, I, I do agree with that. So in case of a huge amount of rain, we'll see a major solo by Wout Van Aert. All right? Yes. Um, second scenario, there won't be a lot of rain, which means we will have a pretty clean course. What's next? Van der Poel wins. But I think it's still going to be tight. I don't think he's going to solo it. Um, we'll Maybe see if something you should bit closer explain to the way you think it will happen then. If Mathieu will win, how is he if going you, to do it? If you saw the attack Sunday in France, um, where he obliterated the opposition, yes, it wasn't Wout van Aert. But the way he 
attacked there was phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, he just kept going um, the whole uphill part. He didn't uh, sit on his saddle. Um, but we saw the same of Wout van Aert in Benidorm, for instance, on the uphill section there. It was more impressive uh, sending in France. I I don't think um, we're able to compare it. It was impressive. Um, it was a strong performance. But I wouldn't dare to say that um, Van der Poel will be world champion because of what we saw there. I no. think he showed he showed at that moment that he he he's, he's in a good form. He came back from training camp. Um, he had some trouble with his back. Um, he didn't really have trouble with it anymore since uh, if we saw his interviews but he he also said that it comes back when he doesn't uh, expect it when it uh, comes to his back problems i think it was a smart choice to go to benidorm and besançon and not uh, hammer instead because there yeah. was a lot of mud in hammer which yeah is is worse for the back i think yeah completely agree with that but i don't know i think we need to keep in mind that it's the world championships are in the netherlands uh, are in Hoer Heide. Uh, I don't I don't want to say it will give a lot of an advantage but he wants to prove himself in his home country I think I actually don't think it matters where the world champions are held for those two because Wout van Aert has a lot of fans everywhere Macho van der Poel is very popular in Belgium as well maybe even more popular than, than Wout van Aert um, but what is important is that um, yeah, Aldri van der Poel is involved in the organization there, and yeah, I, maybe that might play a role for uh, for van der Poel. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, like if we look at the history of Hogerede, Mathieu pretty much always wins there. I think when he started as elites, from moment he started as elites, he's won every single time he entered the race at Hogerede. So Though he lost. A big battle at the world. 2018. In Hoerede. He finished 2 minutes and 38 seconds after the world champion Wout van Aert that year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in the regular season, he always wins it. Uh, but of course, uh, the world champion is not... A uh, world championship is not a regular season race. Uh, but it is a course that suits him really well. That's pretty clear. Uh, I yeah. think Eve hasn't answered the question yet, actually. Um, how Van der Poel is going to win the World Championship? How he wins his other races? They're, all, they're always different. Um, In the final lap. The last couple of years, he did what he wanted to do. If he wants to go for a solo, he launches in the first or second lap. If he wants to wait for half an hour, he waits. This season we've seen another um, thing that uh, Wout van Aert might be the stronger of the two um, in the races we saw. Um, But yeah, I don't know how it will play out to be honest. Yeah. But maybe we should also talk about the other categories because we were talking about the men quite a lot. Um, you already about done with it, Bram. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere with uh, Mathieu and what. Well, like maybe, it's going to be a close race. Maybe to conclude, we should each of us, each of us, uh, should say, yeah, what it will look like, and and who's going to win it. Just be honest. Harbin Kuipers <laughs> for top ten. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Wout's going to win it. Um, but it will be in the last lap, uh, potentially even in the sprint. Okay. Eve? Mathieu van der Poel is going to take it, yeah. Um, why? I don't know. Van der Poel is going to be world champion. Um, my guess... Um, Wout van Aert will be world champion in a, a sprint with two. 
So I th I don't think they won't be able to drop each other. That being that, said, let's go happens, to the elite I will women. Not be happy. Yeah, see you next week, Eve. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to have your camera frozen. <laughs> <laughs> the elite women. So, yeah. Do you think we will see the the usual battle there? Uh, Puck Peters against Van Van Eppel? I think that's what everyone expects. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it will be any different this weekend. It's basically that battle every weekend. Do you think anyone's able to join the battle? Yeah, like if Alvarado is, is uh, really prepared for this race, then I think she could be. Uh, and Lucinda Brandt has also said that she wants to be up there and she believes that she's ready for it. So I could see it being a bigger battle, but at the same time, they are the two main favorites. Do you think um, weather conditions will be crucial there as well? Um, as we say, for the man elite, like Wout van Aert has a huge, uh, a huge advantage when, when it rains. Can we say the same for Puck Peterson, for instance? I think Puck is more technically talented than Femme is. Um, but I think the can't really compare it to Nace. Uh, Nace, what the fuck am I saying? Um, to Van Aert and Van der Poel. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just know Peterson has more the technical is more technical, but Fem is doesn't have the the shape of a power horse because but she can ride quite good in a mud as well. Um, difficult uh, for me. I think uh, Peterson won more of the harder courses um, this year than Van Empel. So I think when it rains a lot that. We will see a tight battle. When it doesn't rain, I'm afraid it won't be that close, actually. I think it's... on a very fast course that, that Van Empel will be world champion easily. easily. I think it's quite difficult to say because of how... Like, we've only seen them race for one year uh, uh -huh. in the pros, uh, in, like, the elite. Um, so to say that one has an advantage in that course and the other has an advantage in that course it's really difficult to say because it might just be the form of the day that we're seeing um, so it's really difficult the shift of generations we've seen in the women elite category is, is quite impressive this season like who would have thought that five months ago um, I wouldn't um, like I was just expecting uh, another season with Brandt, Alvarado, Foss, uh, but we've really not seen that. Um, Bram, you you already mentioned uh, Lucina Brandt, um, the former world champion. Do you think she has a chance um, this weekend? I mean, if you start the race, you have a chance. But that being said, I don't think it's very realistic that we will see her becoming world champion again this year. So a fight for the podium then? I think that's possible. The, the third spot is, is up for grabs in that race. Um, of course, if both of the favorites have technical problems, mechanical problems, something's always possible. Uh, you always have those cases where uh, the pressure on the mechanics is also huge in these races and they can make mistakes. Uh, or uh -huh. they, the riders themselves can make mistakes. Um, the rider who joined the battles between Pieterse and Van Empel most of the time was uh, Shirin Van Androoy, but she is um, starting in the under-23 category. What's your opinion about that? Is that a smart choice? Is that an easy choice? I think it's the wrong choice. Uh, I think she would have been able to really fight for the the win in the elite category again uh, as well but now she's probably just going to dominate the U23 race and although there is Zoe backs out there as well um, I think Shiden should still win there quite comfortably although with backs out you never know uh, she might put up a strong fight I agree on that um, yeah Zoe backs is, is very talented but still I think 
it's a year too early to really compete against uh, Shirin van Anrooy. I think so. I expect there an easy win for uh, van Anrooy. Uh, can we can we blame her for this choice? Um, like uh, some people were saying that, yeah, I don't understand why she's starting in in that race. She should be starting against Petersen and Van Empel anyway. So, what's your I opinion think, about that? I think blaming her is a bridge too far. Um, she still is eligible to start there, so she does nothing wrong with starting there. Does she run away? from the the tougher opposition maybe but it's it, it's it's still a chance for a rainbow jersey and she she wants it and if it's a u23 category she still win, she still wins it um someone else of the Balwaza track lions has a big chance of becoming world champion uh, we're talking about Thibaut Nace in the men under 23 do you see him? Do you see him as the future world champion? Uh, in that category, I think he's well. He's the main favorite, and I think he's going to win it uh, with Ron Hart, uh riding the elite category. Uh, that was always sort of his main competitor. Although you do have uh, Del Grosso as well, who had actually a, a really strong race in Benidorm. Um. But I think Ness is just going to dominate that quite well. He's clearly proven to be in shape with his performance on the Belgian Championship. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's ready for it. Is it fair to say that the other Belgians are his main competitors? I mean, Joram Vizure, Emil Verstringe, those guys? They, they had a really strong race last year. Um, and, yeah, they've... So I think they've been riding the the U23 races mainly, right? They have not been riding much with the elites. Uh, I'm not sure. Talking about um, Vizur and uh, Verstringe? Yeah. Yeah, they did a couple of elite races as well, but uh, most of the time in the World Cups, when there was a World Cup for uh, under-23, they joined uh, those races. Yeah, the reason I really ask is because uh, with Ness, we've seen him in the elite races and like actually trying to go for in these races like really fast starts uh, showing himself at the front uh, and then fading a little bit towards the back but with uh, Vizier and Versting we've not seen them that much in those elite races but that doesn't mean that they haven't prepared for the world champion and uh, being ready to become world champion again Um, I may have one more question about the man elite actually Um. We've been talking about Van Aert and Van der Poel, but of course there are way more competitors at the start than those two. Um, who do you see as the main favorites for place three? Or is that harsh to say it like that? Uh, the first name that pops in my mind is Lars van der Haller. So no uh, Lorenz Zwick, no Michael van Turnhout, even no Eli Iserbit? Eli is it with um, he showed some good form uh, the last couple of weeks yes but in Besançon he was the second strongest rider in the race ah, but yes. he had uh, mechanical issues in the final lap uh, yeah yeah Lars van der Haar I think, I think Michael van Turnhout is one of those riders that really peaks towards championships uh, we saw it as well last year at the world championship the European championship Belgian Championship, he really goes for those races. He doesn't win much in between, uh-huh. um, but the, the way he can peak towards those championships is quite amazing. Um, he's been sick, I think, in, in Benidorm. He skipped that race um, because of sickness. Um, do you think there might be a small decompression after his uh, his two titles? I don't. I I doubt it. I think because he's a professional. He has already got it his first titles this year, or did uh, he already uh, get uh, any previous seasons? No, I think I these were think his first his titles. First, yeah. I don't know how his results were after the European Championships. Um, if he had a decom- decompressing moment at that 
part of the season, but they are professionals and when going to a world championship, they all want to be uh, on their best, I think. All right, I think this might be interesting to take with us for the the review next week. So you're talking about Lars van der Haar, Yves. Uh, Bram, he's going with Michael van Turnhout. And I'm convinced, your name? Uh, I'm convinced that Eli Isserbit will uh, take the bronze medal. Yeah. Congratulations. So we're, not we're, going, we're going for a beer on this one. Only <laughs> one. <laughs> you can. All right, Cyclocross World Championships. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Not about the World Championships, but I do want to talk about one of our young wolves and how he had a pretty amazing first couple of racing days uh, in the Pro Peloton, uh, Lennart von Eitfeld. So uh, yes. we're we're jumping to Mallorca then. Yes, yeah. the beautiful weather of Mallorca. <laughs> I was going to say to the sun, but uh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, uh, quite impressive. Um, he was second twice, I think. A second third and, and third. twice, yeah. Um, I think it's phenomenal to see it are his first race days in the pro team of Lotto. Uh, he starts in Calvia with a 27th place. That's already quite good, in my opinion, when you're racing for the first time in a pro peloton. But then two days after and three days after, finishing twice on the podium, um, it's just phenomenal. In my opinion, it's. I didn't expect him to be this good so early on. Um, last year we had uh, Lucas Plapp, who gave us a victory uh, before the season even started with the Australian National Championships. Um, but now I think those two results are on the same level of e or even higher. I rate them higher, actually. Because a national much more competitive field, yeah, indeed. And the way he did it, it, it looked so mature as well. Like the first victory of Kobe Horsens on that uphill climb. Um, yeah, a climb is always uh, uphill, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the way he he out sprinted his competitors there, that was quite impressive to to see, actually. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Um. And even on like a, a tough day like like those, it's uh, like both races were racing really horrendous weather, really cold. And he afterwards said he hates that weather. Um, and he was that's, still able that's to perform indeed, at that high level. That's an important factor to to mention indeed because um, often you hear that yeah about the uh, Challenge Mallorca. Yeah, it's a race in the sun, first race of the season. And we can't compare it to anything else. But this time conditions were hard, so I think yeah, it predicts a a very good season for uh, Van Eetveld. Um Just looking at his future program till the end of April, um, he's riding quite a bit of one day races, and his first big appointment is the Strade Bianchi, the fourth of March. Then going to Catalonia. Um, Flesh Wallon and Liege Bastion Liege. Um, after seeing those results last week, what can we expect? First of all, in the big races, and secondly, in the second tier races like Fon Arden Classic or Fon Drum Classic. Uh, I think we can see pretty good stuff from him in those second tier races. For like the really big race, the monuments or strade, uh, I think we have to look at how he copes with distance, because uh, of course these races were uh, both quite short, um, 120 and 160 kilometers each. Um, let's see how he does above 200 kilometers this year. Um, but yeah, he definitely has it in him to write some good results. I agree. Um, maybe we may expect some things from him in the. Yeah, smaller races, but like mentioning Strade, that's a very specific race. Um, and yeah, Liège, that's a monument of, of 250 plus kilometers. Maybe you should give him a free roll there and, and don't put too much pressure on him uh, before the race even started. You could even really? put him in the break? 
for instance will he because of these results uh, be a protected man within the lotto team in those races i don't know who they will, yeah, will if, be their leader if they want um, to score some uci points maybe that's a smart plan who will yeah. be their leader actually in, in those races is andreas kroon still andreas there? kroon yeah that's it yeah. <laughs> that might not be it but he's yeah he, uh, might, be the main, he might be the main guy uh, of course. yeah he had some good values in the in the power data um yeah it, in those races, I do think that he could be protected. Um, but honestly, I would love to see him in the break. Just see where he's, uh, where he ends up. He might yeah. go far. Mindy. Maxim Van Hills, is, yeah, can we expect something from, uh, from him as well? That's really difficult to say because he started off last season really strong. But then I believe he got sick uh, with an infection or a virus. I, I'm not sure which one it was. And then we didn't really see many results from him anymore. Uh, but assuming that he's recovered, um, then I think we can see him in those races. But I don't expect him to be fighting for the win in those races. I think because of the fact that we're even looking for names right now, um, it might be a, a smart conclusion to yeah, to protect Van Eetveld. Can't this be dangerous that he will be a team leader? When we need to look this hard to find someone who can carry a team, um, I, I being think Van Eetveld and being a leader in his first pro, first half year as a pro, they're in my, two different right. riders, but it it's actually pretty much the same situation as Arnaud de Lee was in last year. Um, there was a lot of pressure on his uh, shoulders as well. Um, even more because uh, Caleb Ewan didn't perform um, as they wanted him to do but yeah for Van Eetveld it might be a little more dangerous because I think it's more dangerous for a climbing type of rider than for a sprinter yeah but yeah. still the talent is there so yeah, I'm, he's talented. He's talented. I'm not worrying at, at this point actually he should keep his feet on the ground and, and just take it race by race I agree totally agree alright anything else uh, I think we can conclude this uh, podcast um, and I think we should promote our freshly born project we launched today uh, Hannes can you explain a little bit what happened yeah of course um well, today we launched the first article of a series in which we follow Victor Campenaars in his preparation for and during the classic season, with his uh, major goals being Omloop at Nieuwblad, Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen, and he's going for a top 10 spot in Tour of Vlaanderen as well. So we have a weekly chat with uh, Campenaars about his training data and his training evolution. Um, so, yeah, go to the blog and have some fun yeah stay tuned for more all right see you guys next week for the cyclocross world championships review bye bye Bye. see you then bye bye i've got the sparse the sickness there's the twins in my brain